What is uh what is Mozzie Smith brought to the D tackle spot? And are you pretty confident with the depth you have there? At D tackle? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I feel really good about it. Um you know the, the I think the bigger key is uh Carlo Kemp, two ninety plus, um more athletic than a year ago. Um, I think he's really brought a, a sense of maturity uh, to the inside position. And the, the guy that's probably made the biggest jump in one year is Donovan Jeter. Uh, you know, uh, it, it just big, strong, always looked like a pro defensive tackle to me. Uh, but now head screwed on, body's tight you know, understands the position and uh, playing at a high level. Um, Mozzie's coming along. It's a learning process. You know, he should have been going to the prom this spring, you know, and being at home. And he's here uh, playing major college football and uh, shows has shown flashes. Uh, but this 15 practice is really just a, a piece of his development which will continue on in June, July, and then preseason camp. But very uh, love the man, uh, love what he brings to the table. He's one of the strongest guys in the program. We just need him to translate that strength, that physical prowess on a down-to-down -down basis consistently. And that, that's hard to do when you're just walking in the door. So, but we're real happy with him, no, no question. Josh? just got done talking about how uh, he thinks his offense can help protect a defense. Usually it's the big clock consuming, you know, kind of offense that you hear about protecting a defense. Do you, in what ways do you think this offense could help protect your defense? Well, I mean, first off, you got to stand up on your own two feet and take care of your own business. So, you know, that's one thing we need to do. But, you know, obviously if they're moving the football, and, con and controlling the clock and, and finishing drives, you know, there's much, nothing more uh, important than, you know, filling up the scoreboard with points. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, that, that kind of, it's nice when you can sit over there and those kinds of things happen. You know, uh, it'll be interesting. You know, the last two years we've averaged 64 to 66 snaps defensively, which is not a lot now, you know? So it gives you a chance to really, you know, when you get on the field, you know, put your life on the line in essence and go and, and get after it. So, uh, but hey, you know, the beautiful thing is when you're sitting on the sideline and the offense is moving the football, that's, you know, that's not only a, uh, a chance to recover but it also builds confidence in your defense, knowing that they can go out there and lay it on the line, and you know we have a chance to score a lot of points. How do you assess your linebacking core from? Unbelievable. Pre right now, I'm I'm really excited about what, the direction that group's gone. You know, Kalik Hudson's uh, playing at a high level, which I knew he would. Has really, uh, you know, he was sick yesterday. So I'm assuming, you know, and, and actually Phil came in and said, you know, I don't think he's going to end up going today. And I'm like, okay, because he had gone the whole, and I, I, so I go up to him, hey, you're probably not going today. He goes, coach, where am I from? I'm like, uh, McKee's boy. He goes, I'm going today. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So uh, he, he's playing really well. Uh, his coverage skills are up. You know, his pressure mechanics are and his techniques and fundamentals there are excellent. Uh, understands the linebacker position. Uh, Michael Barrett's playing behind him and really doing a good job. Joshua Chase kind of filling in there. You know, he's our Swiss Army knife. He's all over the place. Russia and package, get out there and be a cheetah. You know, all the things that we ask him to do, you know, he's doing really well. Uh, Josh Ross, you know, that's probably been the most frustrating for me. I mean, he has not gone at all. But if you said to me, who is your smartest linebacker, I would say it's him. You know, he just 
you know, again, he's, he's sitting right next to me and he's engaged and understands concept and, you know, Biggs is with us as, as, as one of my graduate assistants, his brother. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's not a lot of uh, lost translation and concept, but one man, you know, one man's frustration is another man's opportunity. And I think Jordan Anthony, who logged, if not the most, you know, he's up in that one, two, three for participation award. Uh, Cam McGrone, Cam McGrone is fast. Now, I'm finally saying Cam McGrone is fast, which means brains on, I know how to go, I know where to go, I know what I've got to do, and now his ability to play fast is being met with, you know, concept understanding. So, uh, you know, happy with him. I think he's played really well the last four or five practices and uh, couldn't be better. Now, over at the Will position, you got Devin Gill playing very solid, body. You know, he's really done a good job with his body. He's faster. Uh, you know, he never, you know, he never makes a misstep. Uh, but he better watch out because old Glasgow's making a lot of plays. And, uh, you know, again, he's another one of our uh, guys, you know, he'll play some Viper, you know, he'll jump in there and play in the packages, but he's making a case for, for playing a lot of Will Linebacker as well. So I, I've never been this deep. I've never had this many guys that I can go boom, 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 boom. You know, they can all jump in there and play. Now it's gonna be competition breeds success. And let's see where the fall takes us because, uh, you know, you, you know, you can only play one at a time, so you either better find a way to get in that rotation or, uh, you know, or win the job outright. So that's, that's the exciting part, and that'll carry over to the, to the fall, and I'm excited about it for sure. How much more versatile does Josh Uche make you with, with this sort of role? I mean, you haven't really had a guy like him here, I don't think. Well, we've had him, you well, know. We have, but to this point <laughs> in his development anyway. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that's what you're alluding to. I mean, now, you know, here's the nice thing about him. You know, when you, when you put him in the play outside linebacker when he was a young guy, you know, we didn't, you know, remember the old saying now, might have traded him for two used footballs, you know? <laughs> so uh, now, you know, he can go out and play Sam linebacker. Uh, he can get it, line up at, open side defensive end and, and knows what to do, how to do it uh, in the run game as well as the pass game. You know, he can jump in all the package stuff and obviously he's a, you know, he's a pass rusher extraordinaire. So, uh, you know, we, we found out last year when through injury that we were able to, between him and Quiddy, you know, in essence, like, you, may, you know, we, we got first, second down production out of Quiddy and third down production out of Josh, which, uh, you know, which was an out, out exciting thing for us. What's it like to practice against an offense that's learning a new system? Or is it any um, You know, that, that, that's a difficult one. I'll tell you this now. I think Coach has done a great job. Coach Gaddis has done a great job of, uh, you know, got those guys going fast, which that certainly helps us. Because like I tell our guys, we're a package defense. It's not a, it's not a mystery. We'll play 17, 18 different guys in different packages. And you, we're gonna sub and go. And you better, you better get up to speed and be running with a sense of urgency to get lined up and all those things. So I, I think that part of it's been really tremendous for us. Um, you know, uh, We've been going through our own, you know, transition in terms of defensively, just trying to, you know, we've integrated a bunch of new concept and, you know, I'm kind of excited where we are right now. Josh said that the toughest part about facing your off, or your defense, excuse me, in practice is its versatility. How have you been able to maintain that versatility after losing so many guys uh, after the last season? Well, you know, last season was, you know, really a, like a picnic in terms of, you know, after the 16 season in terms of changing guys. So, um, you know, you, you just try to, you know, the, the thing that's important 
And, and that's a great, it's a really a great point. You know, when 16 ended and 17 came, you know, you're figuring out in the spring, hey, we're good at this, we're good at this, we're good at this, we're good at this, we're not good at this, we're not good at that. That package ain't that good. So you kind of figure out who you are, and then, you know, you give it your best shot. Then this year, you know, we have the 18 defense. Now new faces. All right, what are you going to be good at? Cheetah? Tampa? This? That? You know, Superman? Now we're doing all these different things and uh, you're trying to figure out what you're going to be good at and I think we for us to find that out we got to put it out there and do it so uh, that's where you know coach is great about letting us do that I mean you know he, he never puts the handcuffs on the defense he just says go do your thing and I'm talking the boss now so uh, you know that allows us to experience growth and, and find out what we're good at and, uh, you know, I think that's really an important piece. And, you know, but I think, I think Coach Gatt has done a great job of, you know, I, they were, if they were learning, they, they certainly seem prepared. Uh, I, I'm really excited about, it, about this football team. Not just my side of it, just watching our team practice, watching them interact with one another. I mean, I just, pretty exciting stuff. I don't even know the answer to this question, but what, what new concepts have you been wrinkling in this spring? What new concepts? You said you've been integrating some new stuff, so we probably know the answer, but we're going to be asking. Well, you know, here's, here's the deal. If I tell you, I'm going to get... <laughs> You'd have to kill him? Take I'd him. Have to kill him. <laughs> but, you know, uh, you, know the, you, you just got to find out what you're good at, and there's some trends that, you know, you know that, that, that we've paid attention to, and uh, I think meets, fits our needs, you know, fits who we are. When you've got, for example, a number of linebackers that, you know, I've obviously been complimentary about, well, you've got to find ways to involve them in the game plan, you know. And it really comes down to that. Uh, you know, you've talked. Josh Uche. Well, you, you just don't go, hey, you can put him in the game. And throw a grenade over there. You know. <laughs> You got you to find ways to be able to put him in the game where it, it's a consistent, finite approach and everybody, you know, you're not impacting everybody around him. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's some things that go into that. So, uh, you know, but nice try. <laughs> great, Maybe next time. Great option. Uh, you know, I think we're playing a hair more... Uh, you know, we'll, we'll never be a true zone team, but I think we're playing some things that, you know, that we feel really good about. You know, we got about nine different ways to come get you now in coverage, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited about where we're at. And I, I just want to say this. I don't remember a secondary and back seven integrated in coverage playing as solid as this group. I'm just saying. Why is that? As physical and as uh, mistake-free as this group in a spring. Well, one, you know, thank God, I think it's our fourth year, so a lot of these guys have been with me from the get. You know, a Josh Metellus, you know, you got Hawkins, Ambry Thomas, now three years, Jalen Kelly Powell, three, you know, you can go on and on and on and on. Uh, Devin Gill, his fourth year. Josh Ross is coming up on his third year. So there's, and, and it's the same guy delivering the message. So consistency gives you a chance to get everybody on the same page. So I think that helps you. You know, when, you, when you're constantly in, in upheaval, that's a difficult deal. So, um, you know, I think that piece plus uh, this group is as, you know, as connected uh, defensively as a group I've been around in terms of uh, trying to help each other out. You know, the older guy is not get away from me, you're not taking my job. You know, it's more about, all right, this, remember now, you got to dent this or you got to do that. You know, I mean, there's a lot of that going on amongst their peers, which is the best form of leadership comes from within. It's not coach-driven. 
How about the guys in front of that uh, back seven? Any concerns about uh, guys in front at this point? Well, let me think here for a minute, okay? Quiddy Pay might be technically the best football player in the country. I'm just saying. I mean, that guy, he's hard to fool. So um, I have no concerns about him. Who is going to be uh, sharing time? Well, you got Uche. We're going to certainly give work, work in there. I just gave you a tidbit. Yeah. OK? <laughs> we're getting there. And uh, <laughs> you know, so he's getting time. Luigi Villain made it through the whole spring, and all he did was go like this and develop confidence that his body is back. So that's a good thing. Um, we got Gabe Newberg, you know, he's a talented guy. Uh, got to get bigger, stronger, faster. You know, obviously should still be at the prom. He's not. Uh, David Ojibo can fly. Uh, so his development will be interesting. Um, you know, you, you, you look at this Michael Dana, okay? He's going to help us. So the question is, does he help us at end? Does he help us at anchor? You know, I don't know. Uh, the guy that I think at anchor, Aiden Hutchinson, big dude. And in football, important to him. And has a charismatic way about him that, you know, football, I mean, I just like the guy. Uh, <coughs> You know, he's, he's still working on some things, you know, that he has to get, you know, get cleaned up in his footwork. But he's upper body, length, being able to, oh, I'm reached, boom. I mean, that's hard to do now. You know, not a lot of guys in the country can do that. So, you know, you got him. Uh, I mentioned Donovan Jeter. I mentioned Carlo Kemp. You know, we got uh, Chris Hinton coming in. Mike Dwomfor has been out with the guys practicing, but you know, in the fall, on your mark, get set, go. So that'll help us. Um, I, I don't, I, I count eight or nine guys there, and I think we'll be just fine. Uh, the interesting thing will be, um, does Luigi get into the mix? Uh, does Ojibo find a way, find some jobs like uh, we tried to give him a couple jobs this spring. Not quite ready for it yet. Um, but next time around, you know, it's easy to coach 10, 900 meters. I mean, guys like that, they're easy to coach. So once they, their brain goes on and they can connect with that, that physicality again and play at a fast rate, you know, you, you got a shot to, you know, to have a pretty good player there. So... Uh, you know, uh, I think I think we're in, I think we're in pretty good shape. I really do. I think we'll end up with at least eight. Um, at worst, you'll be three for two. But I, I I got a good feeling about that D line group. I I, I think uh, you know, young guys get better, and D line guys just need repetition. Once they they've dealt with the base block, the out out block, the arc schemes. You know, and you keep giving them those repetitions, they get better fast. So, you know, the key will be how many of those guys can be great pass rushers or good pass rushers. And, uh, you know, I feel really good about it. I think this is going to be an interesting group defensively. We may, we may be a little different because we may have more guys like this guy's good at this, that guy's good at that, you know, so you might have to piece it in a little bit like that. But that's, a, you know, that's the fun part. So I was going to ask you if you have a starting group in mind, but it sounds like it doesn't even matter if you have that. Yeah, it really doesn't matter. It sounds like you're going to be... You know, well, you, you know, in the defensive front, you're rotating those yeah. guys, really, anyway. Mm -hmm. At linebacker, it's a little different. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's a discernible difference, you play the best guys. If you can keep the rotation on, like a year ago at, at Will, Ross and... And Devin Gill, they shared time, and De Devin Bush Jr. played. Not a rocket science to figure that one out, right? So, uh, but if if you can do that, it's a beautiful thing because guys have the ability to stay fresh, you know, and that's what you're looking for.
Does Ben Mason have a role in this at all? Oh, he, you know, I fit? omitted him. I apologize. He's playing tackle. Now you're going, Donnie's 260-something. Well, he's got all summer. And if there's a guy pound for pound that, you know, like he, you go over there in that wall and say, all right, I want you to drive your head through that wall. <laughs> he's going to drive his head through the wall. I'm just saying. Um, I think he's, obviously, he's infantile stages learning as a defensive tackle. But why defensive tackle as opposed to defensive end? You, you guys have a try. Don't have to teach him a lot. On your mark, get set, go. <laughs> you know, there's your blocks. Fold scheme, double, you know, combo, out, out. That's about it. But it's on your mark, get set, go. So uh, he's been he's re he's been really re been receptive, responsive. He's just the last two practices, and I know this sounds strange, but a lot of guys will go in there and their hands are in here and they just they won't go like that. And the last two practices, he's, he's finally starting to use his hands, and and we're starting to see the benefits of that. But he's got all June. July, and then August comes, he's going to get it all over again. So, uh, you know, he is definitely in the mix. If, if you said to me, would, would he be one of the eight or nine guys that you would consider putting in the game, I would say that. You, that would be an easy one, absolutely. John, with, with, not to get into specifics, of course, obviously, you guys, you guys evolve every year, and folks evolve every year, you yeah. every year. But how much, how much of this year's would be, you know, with how the game's called, maybe, and, and how other teams run offense or what they do to you? I mean, how much of the new things or whatever wrinkles you add in, how much of that factors into it? You know, um, it factors in a lot. But, you know, the, the problem you can do, which I don't have a problem with, you know, it's like we had this big discussion about, wow, what about this, what about that, what about that? Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't react to anybody now. You just live in re the reaction world, that means you're not acting. You don't have, so what's your identity? Well, you don't have one, you're just reacting to the offense. You know, and, and I'm not saying we're perfect, but we're gonna have an identity. We're gonna stand for something. And uh, you know, I, I, you know I, make, I make that clear to the players. Uh, and, I, and I think the players understand that we need that. You know, uh, I think if you went in the room and asked them, they, 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 they'd be fairly strong on a couple of things for sure. But I think you got to be careful about being reactionary. Now, there's all these runs from 2018, these different runs, from number one through the last one. We have a way that we will defend each and every run. So it's not like, oh, you just don't care, you just let it go, and then they out scheme you. Up. It's really not that dramatic. It's, this is the way we defend the slash play. This is the way we defend the counter GH. You know, and we go, you know, we're in defensive end, dent. First puller, second puller, you'll show up as the, I mean, we do that. And uh, there's, there's a, there's a method to the madness on each and every run. Then it's just getting your, here's the key. Then just get your guys good at defending all the runs. Now, how well you can achieve those two things will determine success or failure on a given Saturday. That's just the way it is. So you better, you know, be right as much as possible in terms of A, this is what I think they'll do against us. Now, we have the big decision Gap scheme versus zone scheme. Well, you guys don't really, what am I saying? But you know, my point is, are they zone blocking because they're worried about all the penetration? Because also, if they gap scheme and stop pulling, they create holes and then obviously, you know, we put big smiles on our face when people do that. Is, so, the, is the zone more zone in coverage? Is, so you just said, is it not reactionary? It's more personnel driven then? Uh, no. It's having, you know, like coach tells me all the time, more is more. 
make sure you have enough answers. Got enough answers. Sorry. Um, how do RPOs, I guess, Don't apologize. how you teach run fits? Huh? How do RPOs, I guess, change how you teach those runs? Well, you, do you know what people will say to you about RPOs? You tell me. No? <laughs> do, you, do you know? I don't. It's, it's very difficult to defend RPOs and play a lot of true zone coverage. So do you think I'm worried about that? <laughs> no. I'm not. I'm not being a jerk. I'm being honest as a heart attack. You, you defending zones against what Josh Gaddis does. Hang on to your hat. You, you at least got to have enough guys that can cover your run scheme gaps and cover the guys. Now that's not the only way to defend it. Okay. There's other ways to defend those RPOs. But my, but my true point is, it's got to be an element of that has got to be account for those guys and still have the numbers that are effective to stop the run. Because if you don't have the numbers that are effective, because they read the box, and you don't have the numbers that are effective enough to stop the run or manage the run, they're going to run the ball up and down the field on you. Just. Got time for one or two more questions because the man needs to get on an airplane. Yes, he does. <laughs> I don't mean to. I don't mean to be flip. Do you get tired of? I think you listen to things that people say, read some. You know. Yeah, I'm not you stupid. Get, yeah, so I mean, <laughs> do you get tired of the the Monday morning quarterbacking? No, I don't. Simplifying you know, what you're doing that's not simple. There's only one thing that I don't. I don't. I, that I, I mean, I think everybody has a right. I mean, that's. The, the, the profession that, you know, that I've chosen. Um, I think everybody has a right to their own opinion. That's, it's all good. It's all good. I don't like it when they start, when things start being said about 18, 19, 20 year old guys that shouldn't be said, okay? Old guy, okay. <laughs> Been there, done that, okay? Had moments, you know, I've had moments when we, we've had, we, we won 10 games in a row, we had great moments. Okay, then we have, we have the, uh, the Ohio State debacle. Don't blame the players, okay? But you know something? You live in that world of negativity, are you ever gonna get yourself out of it? You're not, so you know, we'll be ready to go. Every day, there's a part of the day that you're getting ready to get better as a professional. Trust me, that's the approach I take. Zordich said the other day, the scheme was good, execution was terrible. How do you, uh, it's an easy way to, to analyze it, but how do you, how does that happen? I don't know. It's difficult. It's a difficult process. You know, uh, you know my hat's off you know, to them. Uh, they had a better game plan than we did. Well. You know, and obviously, you know, you look at their season, Purdue, um, uh, Maryland, you know, there's, there's games there, you, you know, it just happens. Now, it's beautiful when you don't have any, but it's not happening those ways anymore. You just don't go out and, and uh, pe you know, people do a good job of, of game planning on a week-to-week -week basis. And, uh, you know, that determines success and failure. And when you succeed, you move on in a humble way. When you fail, you fix it. Or if you don't fix it, then just lay in the, lay in the weeds and feel sorry for yourself and fail again. You know, and, you know, obviously that's not what you try to do. Can anyone want to end on a positive note? Can How I about a positive Here, note? Here, I want to ask this. Josh says that Harbaugh's hands off the offense. He's obviously not hanging out with you in the defensive rooms. Or wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm sure he wants to, but. Um, wait a minute now. But are you seeing him, is he operating things differently this spring? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna say this about coach, okay? Going on my four, four, wow, fourth year, four years. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, he runs, when, you know, he's the CEO. He's running the program. You know, I marvel sometimes, like, like when spring practice ended, and then I look and see the repetitions we've got on 
you know, we're talking about plays, right? Slash play, sucker play, bluff play, uh, different situations that we've been put in as a defense. Uh, red zone, second and seven, play the next down. I mean, I, I think he's a master at, at touching all the competitive situations that you'll, that you'll be involved in. He's a master at maximizing repetitions, but once again, keeping players on their feet and healthy at the same time. So when you go in to, to camp, uh, you know, you got a chance because you got all your soldiers that are upright. Um, so that's a beautiful thing. I mean, he just knows what he's doing. I mean, he's, he's the best at managing a team managing a roster and getting the most out of practices and keeping the team healthy. So, you know, I don't know anybody that does it better. I mean that sincerely. Do you want him to hang out with you in the defensive Yeah, team? yeah, like, <laughs> like him to hang out. <laughs> He's got good ideas now. Uh, I got one question for you. Hmm. What do you guys think of the transfer portal? Yeah, I was going to ask you about Miles. Oh, I'm not talking about but any individual. The concept. Interesting. Feels a little... Well, the jokes have gotten very old. I will say that. Do you think it's a free agency thing? Yeah, I, I, I got, you know, I'm 63 years old, and I, I just, I'm not sure this was uh, the way it's supposed to be, but that's just me. What do you think of a one-time transfer? Do you think that would be a reasonable, uh, a freebie, basically? I, I guess. You know, I, I, you know, it's just, I just don't, I'm not sure it's good for anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, face adverse, man introduce, you know, adversity introduces a man to himself. So, you know, Don Brown has a problem with a player, I'm out. Is that teaching a young man anything? I mean, is he learning anything from it? Uh, now, I guess, you know, every situation is different, and, you know, I'm probably opening myself up to, I just, you know, it's disappointing. I, I, with all the activity that's going on, I, I'm not sure that's what we're really searching for in college football. You can't be surprised to see the number of quarterbacks who are. Yeah, I, I, you know, I get, you know, I, that's. You know, I don't, What's the number I don't, of players? What's the number of players that are in the portal or that are transferring? All sports. I'm just saying football. Football. Just football. football. Yeah, Let's just, just go find football. a few. A you know? In the hundreds. Hundreds, right? Yeah. yeah, definitely. Now, you know, I mean, I know that includes people that aren't on scholarship as, as a, not only the players that aren't on scholarship, but, you know, it's, I don't know. I, it, it, there's something about it that I just just makes me feel bad, you know, that that we're not <clears throat> still in education, still part of the educational process, learning to deal with people, situations that may be adverse. I think are all things that you know uh, that are important, and I think oh, I'm out of here. Well, you know. And, and I'm not saying coaches aren't, aren't prob, a part of that deal either because, you know, there's a lot of movement in our profession. So I think it's a, a two-way street. So, But I just don't the, – the fear I have is I'm not sure it's good for anybody. That's all. I mean, you get your whole team wiped out. But there are going to be exceptions, you think? I mean, like, obviously yeah, Shea I'm, coming here, you know. That I, kind of, I think there's yeah. – there's, I, I, you know – I don't see a lot of exceptions now. Mm -hmm. It's whatever you decide, and then I don't know if there's a really an evaluation of each situation now. And I'm not, you know, again, again, I'm not. I just, you know, it's just fearful. Now, hey, you know, something that's, you know, obviously there's a problem. I mean, that's a different deal now, but. Just the, what did we say? Hundreds. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, so. Hundreds. I, you know, that many unhappy people. You know. Quite unhappy, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Are there days you uh, you 
want to jump in the transfer portal? <laughs> 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 yeah, have the <laughs> <laughs> We're waiting on that. 